Hello and welcome to A Sword in Meeples. I'm your host as always, Philip, and as you've clicked on the video, you know the title to this is 10 of my two-player games that I will pull out any chance that I get. So yeah, let's get right into it. I'm going to go over a few things here before we get into what games I actually have on the table before me, or off to the side I guess it is really, so you can't see them right away. Um, these are The main reason I play a lot of two player games is my primary play group is my wife. And I know a lot of other people just from looking at Board Game Geek um, and other sources like on Facebook. A lot of people are always looking for two-player games that will interest them and their significant other or the one other person that they have in their life that plays games with them. Um, so that's my first thing. Second thing, I like a lot of one-on-one -on -one interactions. So you get me in a group and the group dynamic kind of changes a lot of things. So I really enjoy that one-on-one -on -one connection with people like even chess and games like that where you are one-on-one -on -one interactions rather than having to control a whole group dynamic well I don't mind that um, assorted meeples I am of the assorted meeples crew I'm probably the worst at controlling the table so to speak um, as far as what I'm doing and why I'm doing it and getting other people to do what I want because I just don't do that. Um, I typically just focus on my own game. A lot of these games are middling, light middling. Um, yeah, all these games are light middling, but they're good strategies. They're, a lot of them have a very good puzzle in there that I really enjoy and um, not a lot of take that kind of elements but a good push and pull which I think two player games need more than a take that element they need a push and pull mechanic in there where you're just vying to get the proper leverage to win the game um, so without further ado we're gonna start this out I these are in no particular order um, I'll some of them are more played more often and more my favorite or my wife's favorite and I'll try and mention that to them but um, this is the wonderful game of the blockle uh, I do not have a box for it anymore because the box had holes so that the cubes would stick out so the box went away once the game was opened this was a heck of a buy for a two-player game um, you are trying to get your stars star side up on top of the other person's star and each side of the dice has its own special ability that allows you to you flip it over and then you do that dice sight faces ability and it gets really hard and it becomes this very interesting puzzle and dance as you try and get your pieces off the board before your opponent highly recommend it if you can find that one um, I found my copy at Barnes & Noble, but they no longer have it. Next up, again, this is in no particular order, is the game Squadro. Now, I found this one at Gen Con 2021 and by, uh, by Gigamic, Gigamic uh, Games, and it was by Hatchet was selling it in the U.S. Um, this is a really interesting one. This is another abstract strategy game about uh, regatta races. Um, so you will be sailing your boats across the harbor and back while before your opponent can. But if you get jumped over, you get reset back to the beginning. So it's very much a uh, Mexican standoff half the time where you are, if you go forward, they'll jump you, reset you, and then you have to start all over again. But 
how long do you hold that out before you actually lose the game because you just stood there st staring at one particular thing? My wife likes that one because she can manage to stick me pretty good at it. Um, yeah, she's actually better at solving puzzles than me most of the time. Mob Big Apple is a game by Steve Finn and it is interesting. I was not expecting this out of this game. You are trying to control neighborhoods in New York and you're trying to get the areas that you control to have the most alcohol because it's set in 1920s prohibition. You're trying to make your opponent take the fall with the DA and you're trying to control as many areas as you can with the most alcohol in it as you can. I was not expecting it. It is a very, very good game. And the weird part is, is you don't know until the end of the third round who won the game because you don't score points through the whole game. It's the final round that pay, does the payout. And I think it's fabulous. Next up, we'll go with another smaller box, is Castellan. Castellan is a amazing little game by Steve Jackson Games. I never get to play this game because Heather does not like it. Uh, if you ever played the square game where you just try and create squares and claim it with your initials while leaving it, not leaving it where your opponents can get it, this is that game, but in, with the 3D castle builds. I adore this game. Uh, I played this game first at a convention in Kansas City where I went to see George R. R. Martin and George R. R. Martin and Brandon Sanderson as they were the guests of the convention. But I sat down and played that and I was like, oh buddy, this is good. So when I fully got into board games, I think like ah, probably later that year actually, because that was when Francis was born. Yeah, so when I started really getting into board games, yeah, I played this shortly before then. I was already playing Catan with the old retired guys. Um, it really drew me in, and I went and found it, which it was getting hard then, so I don't even know. Like, this could be a, worth some money. I just have no clue, but it's never going anywhere because I like the game. I don't care. Next up, let's go ahead and take this one. Um... Santorini, big surprise. This is a great abstract um, worker place or movement and action. You, every turn you're going to move, you're going to build. Um, my, I have my pieces currently in primer, so I didn't have them out on the table there when I'm displaying it. This game is great because it has special god powers. It has um, movement where you can really screw with your opponent. I enjoy this one. It's fun. It's very quick games, five, ten minutes, and you're done. Um, or it can take a while if you guys are really good at strategy, but you're building up trying to get to the top of the third level without having your opponent cap the dome. So it's a very much a push and pull your opponents out while keeping yourself around them to stop their plans. Uh, Seven Wonders Duel. I have not got to play this as much as I would like to play it. But this is a fabulous reduction of a game from a larger group game down to just two players. They lose the drafting mechanic as it is where you pass a card like Sushi Go, but they do a pyramid where you're grabbing off the pyramid. I think it's wonderful. We got the expansions. We haven't played them because Heather just didn't enjoy it. So when she doesn't enjoy her first gameplay, she doesn't want to go back through and try it again as much it's nothing against my wife it's just how it works i i don't mind i want to get more into this there's a solo variant on that one that i need to try i need to print off again and then play it because the first time i printed it i got it messed up next on this list is the game spirit of the spirits of the wild sorry and i love this game because well this is probably my best purchase ever 
for price to value of a game. Uh, this is by Mattel Games. It's no longer, I don't think it's any longer in print, and it is pricey to get your hands on because it went out of print, and Mattel's like, meh, we're never going to reprint it because that's what Mattel does for some reason. Um, I've been surprised by the Mattel games I have bought from them. And uh, this game, you are trying to put spirit stones down on different spirit animals, consolation style, animal, uh, and collect the most to get the most points to win. The game is you're pulling stones out of a bag into the bowl. Well, there's these opalescent clear stones, uh, pearlescent stones that are when five of those come out of a bag, game's over. Uh, well, you finish that player's turn and the game's over. It's very, when you start getting a lot of pieces on your board, it gets extremely stressful about how it's going to end. Uh, we'll do this one next because this will, this is uh, Dice Throne. This is the season two box battle chest. This is battle Yahtzee for lack of better words of how to describe it you have a player board you're rolling your dice for either symbols or numbers it just comes out right it doesn't matter the characters that are playing against each other unless your dice or your cards just go way wonky you always have a chance to win this i use the season two box because i actually do not like the cover of the season one re-rolled um, I like this clean just it's just the emblem I wish they would have just done an alternate like a slightly alternate color with just this nice simple branding rather than the Mad King on his throne on it to me it just doesn't doesn't have that same feel air land and sea critters at war if you had given me the air, land, and sea, I would have walked past. Actually, I did walk past. The artwork drew me to this game. The five seconds of explaining the rules to me drew me into this game. This is another one that I cannot get Heather to play with me much because um, she doesn't know the cards and all their abilities and how they interact with each other. So... She's really hesitant to play games that she doesn't fully understand. That's just, anybody does that. I just, I learn rules very fast. But this is a great one because you're trying to control three different theaters by the end of the game. I'm going to just set that one up. And uh, the fun mechanic here is, is if you know you're go not going to get two of those three theaters, you can quit the battle and give them less points for winning that battle and the sooner you do that the less points they get so you're walking a tightrope of whether you get to win or your opponent does not get the cards that they or the points that they were hoping to get fun great push and pull the card work the cards are all fabulous and do their own thing on each card um, there's only 18 cards to this game I mean, 21, 23 technically, if you count all the extras, and then some coins. This is there's very little component quality in this game. Doesn't matter. Fabulous game. They are printing the expansion at the Critters at War, so I'm looking forward to that. Uh, Onitama. This is a wonderful little game that has... Uh, is chest reduced to five pieces with external moves rather than each individual piece doing its own thing. You get five moves that you can use on any of your people. The objective is to either capture the enemy martial arts school's teacher or get your teacher to the other school's archway. I enjoy it. Me and play Heather play a good game of this. I have all the content for it that I am aware exists. And when we play, it's always a good battle. Now, I played in a tournament of this. I got my butt handed to me pretty well because they had more practice than I did and knew just better strategists. I'm good strategists. They were just better at it. I'm perfectly willing to admit when I get my butt handed to me. Um... But yeah, that, I love this one because it's so simple, yet 
very deep, very much a push and pull. You are hosed no matter what you do once you kind of figure it out. There's always a wiggle room, but yeah. These are 10 games that I really enjoy at a two-player account. I will use every excuse I can to pull these games out and play them. Even if my wife doesn't necessarily like them the most, but yeah, it's okay. She plays with me because she loves me. I hate saying that, but she does. So, what two-player games do you guys play a lot? I will probably be putting out another video of games that are uh, higher player count that play amazing at two players, and we will go from there because, yeah, I, I, I have a lot of those games where me and Heather play them. Um, actually, you can watch them on our Table for Two series here on YouTube. Um, but yeah, so we will see you guys next time because I'm just rambling now because that's what I do. I get lost in front of the camera and then I just start rambling. So, and now I'm doing a Midwestern goodbye where you just keep cycling saying goodbye but it's talking as well. But this time I'm going to end it. Shane's going to take us out of here and you guys have a wonderful e evening, day, whenever you're watching this. All right, bye. <laughs> If you like what you just saw, please support us by hitting that like button and subscribing to our channel for more great gaming content.